from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with coverage of the global .next digital experience, brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of the Nutanix .next digital experience. We've got two of the C-suite here to really dig into some of the strategy and partnerships uh, talked at the, their annual user conference. Happy to welcome back to the program two of our CUBE alumni. First of all, we have Tarkin Maynard. He is the Chief Customer Officer at Nutanix and joining us also Rajiv Mirani. He is the Chief Technology Officer, CTO. Rajiv, Tarkin, great to see you both. Thanks so much for joining us on theCUBE. Great to be back. Good to see you. All right, so, so Tarkin, uh, you talk about you know, a number of announcements. Uh, so you had some, some big partner uh, executives up on stage. Uh, as I just talked with Monica about, you know, Scott Guthrie wearing the signature you know, red polo. Uh, you, you had Kurt Scalgen uh, from Lenovo, of course, a, a real growing partnership uh, with Nutanix, a bunch of others. And even uh, my understanding, the, the partner program uh, for how you go to market is gone through a lot. So a lot of stuff to go into partnerships. Uh, don't need to tackle it all uh, here up front, but give us some of the highlights uh, for, from your standpoint. I'll tell you, Stu, uh, my dear friend Rajiv and I have been really busy. Uh, you know, last uh, few months, uh, last, last 12 months have been uh, super, super busy for us. And as you know, the latest announcements we made, uh, the new $750 million investment from Bain Capital, uh, amazing FY20, you know, results, Q4, big results. Uh, and obviously in the last few months, uh, big announcements with AWS as part of our hybrid multi-cloud vision. And obviously uh, Rajiv and I were making several, you know, announcements, product announcements, partner announcements uh, at .next. So uh, at a high level, uh, I know Rajiv is going to cover this a little bit more in detail, but we covered everything under these three premises around run better, run faster, and run anywhere without stealing the thunder from Rajiv. But I just want to give you at a, at a high level a little bit, what excites us a lot is obviously the customer partner intimacy and with all this new IP innovation and announcement, also very strong, very tight operational results and, and, and operational execution makes the company really special as a independent software vendor in this multi-cloud era. Obviously, we are the only true independent software vendor, $2 billion run rate business, uh, in a sense, with fast growth. Tying to that announcement chain, we made this big announcement with Azure partnership. Uh, our Nutanix portfolio under the Nutanix cluster brand now uh, available as a bare metal service uh, on, on Azure after AWS. The partnership is new with uh, Azure. Uh, we just announced the first uh, angle of it. Uh, limited access customers are taking a look at the service. Uh, we're going to have a public preview in a few months and, and more to come. And obviously we're not going to stop there. Uh, we have tons of work going on with other cloud providers as well. Tying that obviously big focus with our Citrix partnership uh, globally around our end user computing uh, business. As Rajiv will uh, outline further, our portfolio on top of our digital infrastructure tying the data center services, DevOps services and end user computing services Citrix partnership becomes a big one. And obviously we're tying the Lenovo and HP partnership to these things as the core platforms to run that business. It's creating tons of opportunity and I'll cover a little bit more further uh, in more detail, but one other cloud partnership we are also focusing on our Google partnership around desktop as a service. So these are all coming together around data center, DevOps and user competent services on top of that amazing infrastructure Rajiv and team built over the past 10 years. I see Rajiv as one of our co-founders alongside with Diraj and others. So the business is obviously booming in multiple fronts. This FY21 20 was a great starting point with all this investment with Bain Capital, $750 million, big execution, a CD transition, software transition. And obviously these cloud partnerships are going to make a big difference as we move forward. Yeah, so Rajiv, uh, I want to build off what Tarkin was just saying there. So that, that really coming together, uh, when, when I heard the strategy run better, run faster, run anywhere, uh, it really pulled together some of the threads I've been watching at Nutanix the last couple of years. Uh, there's been some SaaS 
solutions where it was like, wait, I don't understand how that ties back uh, to really the core of what Nutanix does. And of course, you know, Nutanix, you know, more than just, you know, an HCI company, it's software uh, and that simplicity and the, that experience is, as you, your team has always said, trying to make things invisible. But help, help if you would kind of lay out, there's, there's a lot of announcements, but architecturally there were some significant changes from the core, uh, as well as, you know, if, if, if I'm reading it right, it feels like the portfolio has a little bit more cohesion uh, than, than I was seeing a year or so ago. Yeah, actually the, the theme around all these announcements is, is the same, really. It's, it's this uh, ability to run any application, whether it's the most demanding traditional applications, you know, the SAP HANAs or the Epics and so on, uh, but also the more modern cloud native application, any kind of application. We want the best platform. We want a platform that's simple, uh, seamless, and secure. Uh, but we want to be able to run every application. We want to run it with great performance. So if you look at the announcements that we have made around uh, strengthening the core with uh, Block Store, adding things like virtual networking, as well as announcements we have made around uh, uh, building carbon uh, platform services, essentially making it easier for uh, developers to build applications in a new cloud native way, but still uh, have the choice of running them on premises or in the cloud. Uh, we believe we have the best platform for all of that. And then of course we want to give customers the optionality to run these applications anywhere they want, whether that's the private cloud, their own private data centers and service providers or in the public cloud and the hyperscaler. So we give them that whole range of choices. Um, and, and you can see that all the announcements fit into that one theme, any application, anywhere. That's basically it. Well, I'd like you to build a, just a little bit more on the application piece. Uh, the, you know, the the developer uh, conversation is something we've been hearing from Nutanix the last couple of years. Uh, we've, we've seen you in the cloud native space. Of course, Carbon is your, yeah. your 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 Kubernetes offering. So, you know, the line I used a couple of years ago at .dot next was modernize the platform. Then you can modernize all of your applications on top of it. So, you know, where does Nutanix touch the developer? You know, how does that, you know, building new apps, modernizing my apps, uh, tie into the Nutanix discussion? Yeah, great questions too. So, last year we introduced Carbon for the first time, and if you look at Carbon, the initial offering was really targeted at uh, targeted as, at an IT audience. Right? So, it's basically the, the the goal was to make Kubernetes management itself very easy for the IT professional. Uh, so, so essentially, you know, whether you were creating a Nutanix, uh, sorry, a, a carbon cluster or scaling it out or upgrading Kubernetes itself, we wanted to make that part of the life cycle very, very simple for IT. Uh, for the developer, we offered a vanilla Kubernetes system. And this was something that developers asked us for again and again, that don't go around mucking around with Kubernetes itself. We want vanilla Kubernetes. We want to use our kubectl, all the tools that we're used to. Um, so don't go fork off and build yet another Kubernetes distribution. That's the last thing we want. So, so, so we had a good platform already, but then we wanted to take the next step because very few applications today are self-contained in the sense that you know they, they run entirely within themselves without uh, dependence on external services. Especially when you're building in the cloud, you have access. You know, suppose you're building at Amazon, you have access to RDS to manage your databases. Don't have to manage it yourself. You have object stores. Uh, data pipelines, all kinds of platform services available, which really can accelerate uh, uh, development of, of, of your own applications, right? Uh, so we, we, we took the stance that, look, this is good, this is important. We want to give developers the same kind of services, but we want to make it much more democratic in the sense that we want them to be able to run these applications anywhere, not just on AWS or not just on GCP. And that's really the genesis of uh, Kubernetes platform services. We've taken the most common services people use in the cloud and made them available to run anywhere, public cloud, private cloud, anywhere. So uh, we think it's very exciting. Tarkin, uh, we, we had a, you and I had a discussion uh, with, with one of your partners on how this hybrid cloud scenario is playing out at, at HPE Discover, of course, with, with the GreenLake solution. Uh, I'm curious from your standpoint, all the things that Rajiv was just talking about, that's a real change. If you think about kind of the traditional infrastructure people, they're, they're needing to move up the stack. You've got partnerships with the hyperscalers. So help explain a little bit the, the ripple effect of as Nutanix helps customers simplify and modernize, how your partners and your channel uh, can, can, can still participate. So perfect. Look, Stu, as, as you heard from Rajiv, this is like all coming super nicely together. 
um, is Rajiv outlined with the data center operations and services, DevOps services to enable that faster uh, time to market capability with our Kubernetes offering and user services, our desktop services on top of that classical industry leading record breaking digital infrastructure that hybrid uh, you know, a cloud infrastructure we call today. We play the, the, this game with the wording a little bit. As you remember, we used to call uh, um, hyper-converged infrastructure. Now we call it hyper-cloud hybrid infrastructure in a sense. All those pieces coming together nicely end-to-end, -to -end, unlike any other vendor. And from a software-only perspective, we're not owned by a hardware company, uh, which, is, which is making a huge difference, gives us tremendous level of uh, uh, flexibility, democratization, and freedom of choice. Cloud to us is basically, is not a destination. It's an operating model. You heard me say this before, as Rajiv also said. So in our strategy, when you look at it, Stu, we have a three-pronged approach on top of our on-prem marketplace, on-prem capabilities with 17,000 plus customers, 7,000 plus channel and strategic partners. Also, as part of this, we're announcing this new uh, a partner program we call Elevate under Elevate Brands, bringing all the channel partners, ISPs, platform partners, hyperscalers, telco XSPs, and our uh, uh, go-to-market partners all in one bucket where we manage them simply with incentives. It's a very simple way to execute that. Obviously, Chris Caderas, our chief revenue officer, as well as Christian Alvarez, our chief partner officer, so to speak, he runs globally all the channels, working together tightly with our organization on the product front to deliver this. So one key point I want to share with you, tying to what Rajiv said earlier, on the multi-cloud area, obviously we realize customers are looking for freedom of choice. So we have our own cloud, Nutanix Cloud, under the Xi brand, XI, Xi brand, which is basically our own logistics, our own uh, basically serviceability, payment capability, and our software running on our Colo partnerships, like Equinix, delivering that uh, you know software as a service. We started with disaster recovery as a service, very fast growing business. Now we announced our GreenLake partnership with HPE in the back end. Uh, that back end, that data center as a service might be actually HPE GreenLake if the customer wants it. So that partnership creates huge opportunities for us. Also on top of that, we have these telco XSP partnerships uh, as we're announcing partnerships with some amazing service providers like OVH. You heard today uh, from Khalid Sudani at uh, Societe Generale. They are not only using AWS and Azure and Nutanix on-prem and Nutanix clusters on Azure and AWS for their internal deployments, but they also use a local service provider in France for data gravity and data security reasons. A French company uh, dealing with French business and data centers with that kind of a, a, you know, data governance requirements within the country, within the borders of France. So in that context, we have also the service provider partnerships coming in. We're going to announce a, a partnership with OVH as well, which is a big deal for us. And tie into this, as Rajiv talked about, our clusters portfolio, our portfolio basically running on-prem on AWS and on Azure, and we're not going to stop there, obviously. So give choice to the customers. So as Rajiv said, basically Nutanix can run anywhere. On top of that, he announced uh, just today with Capgemini a new dev test environment as a service where Rajiv's portfolio end-to-end -end, data center DevOps and some of the EUC capabilities for dev test reasons can run as a service on Capgemini Cloud. We have similar partnerships with HCL, with similar partnerships with Bitcoin, and we're super excited for this .next and FI21 because of those reasons. Rajiv, one of the real challenges we've had for a long time is I want to be able to have that optionality. I want to be able to live in any environment. Um, I don't want to be stuck in an environment, but I want to be able to take advantage of, of the you know innovation and, and, and the functionality that's there. Can you give us a little bit of insight? How do you make sure that Nutanix can live in these environments like the, the, the new Azure partnership and it has the Nutanix experience, yet I can take advantage of you know, whether it be AI or some other uh, capabilities that, uh, you know, a Google, an Amazon, or uh, a Microsoft has. How do you balance that? And, you know, it, it, you have to integrate with all of these partners, yet not, you know, lock out the features that they keep adding. Right, absolutely. And that, that's a great point, too. And that's something we pride ourselves on, that, you know, we're not taking shortcuts. We're not trying to create our own bubble in these hyperscalers where we run, 
in an isolated environment and can't interact with the rest of the services they offer. And that's uh, primarily why we have spent the time and the effort to integrate closely with their virtual networking, with the services that they provide, and uh, essentially offer the best of both worlds. We take the Nutanix stack, the entire software stack, everything we build from top to bottom, make it available so the same experience is, uh, is there with you know upgrades and Prism, the same experience is available on-prem and uh, in the cloud. But at the same time, as you said, we want, we want people to have full speed access to cloud services. There's things the cloud is doing that will be very difficult for anybody to do, right? I mean, the kind of thing that, uh, you know, say Google does with AI or, uh, or, or uh, uh, Azure does with databases. It's, 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 it's remarkable what these guys are doing and you want to take advantage of, of, of those services. So for us, it's very, very important that uh, that that access is not uh, constrained in, in any way, but also that customers have the time to make this journey, right? If they want to move to cloud today, they can do that. And then they can refactor and redevelop their applications over time and start consuming these services. It's not an all or nothing proposition. It's not that you have to refactor and rewrite before you can move. That's been extremely important for us. And, you know, it's really topical right now, especially with this pandemic, I think, uh, one thing all of IT has realized is that you have to be agile. You have to be able to react to things in time frames you never thought uh, you needed to, right? So it's not just disaster recovery, but uh, I, I, the amount of uh, effort that's gone in the last few months in enabling a distributed workforce. Who thought it would happen so quickly? Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's a kind of agility that an optionality that we are giving to customers that really makes it possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now, th things are moving pretty fast. So uh, let, let, let me mm -hmm. let both of you have the final word. Uh, give us a little bit viewpoint as things are moving fast. What's on the plate? What should we be expecting to see uh, from Nutanix uh, and, and your ecosystem uh, through, through the rest of 2020? Argan? So look, uh, you know, as uh, you know, you heard from us, uh, Stu, I know you're talking to uh, multiple folks and you had this uh, discussions with us end to end. Look, uh, for a company to be successful, customer partner intimacy, IP innovation and execution, and operational excellence, obviously all three things need to come together. So in a sense, uh, Stu, we just need to keep moving. Uh, I, I give this um, analogy a lot. As Benjamin Franklin says, uh, the uh, uh, human beings are divided in three categories, you know? Uh, the first one is those who are immovable. They never move. Second uh, category, those who um, uh, you know, uh, movable. You can move them if you try hard. And obviously, third category, those who just move. Not only themselves, but they move others. Like in a sense, in a nice way to uh, uh, you know refer to Benjamin Franklin with one of our key uh, uh, founders in the U.S. In a sense, as the founders of this company, with folks like Rajiv and other executives and some of the newcomers. You build a culture which just keeps moving. And the last 12 months, you've seen some of these. And obviously, going back to the announcement of AWS, now Azure, uh, the Capgemini announcement, uh, dead test as a service around some of the portfolio that Rajiv talked about, our uh, you know, a Google partnership on desktop as a service, big focus on Citrix globally uh, with Azure, Google, and ourselves, on-prem, off-prem. And obviously, some of the big moves we're making with some of the customers, it's going to continue. This is just the beginning. I mean, literally, Rajiv and I were doing these, you know, dot next conferences, announcements, and so on. We're actually doing calls right now to uh, basically execute for the next 12 months. We're planning the next 12 months execution. So we're super excited now with this new Bain Capital investment uh, and also the partnership, the product. We're ready to rock and roll. So uh, look forward to seeing you soon, uh, Stu, and we're going to have more news to cover with you. Yeah, exactly right, Tark. And I think. Uh, as Tarkin said, we are, we are the beginning of a journey right now. I think the way hybrid cloud is now becoming seamless opens up so many possibilities for customers, like things that were never possible before. Uh, most people, when they talk hybrid cloud today, they're talking about you know fairly separate environments, some applications running in, in the public cloud, some running on-premises. Applications that are themselves hybrid that run across or that can burst from one to the other or can, 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 can move around with both app and data mobility, I think the possibilities are huge and, and it's, it's, it's going to be many years before we, we see the full potential of this platform. 
Well, Rajiv and Tarkin, thank you so much for sharing uh, all of the updates. Congratulations on the progress and absolutely look forward to catching up in the near future and, and watching the journey. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And stay with us for more coverage here from the Nutanix.next digital experience. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.